Joining us now is Ojinika Ojiokwe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinek. Good morning, Dr. How are Abate. You? Thank God it's <laughs> yeah, you're just cracking I'm up from inside. TGI, happy Friday, and his face is so serious. Good morning, Ayo. How are you this morning? I'm very Perfect. well. And you're a picture of TGI, if I have to say. Oh, thank yeah, you. Picture. Good morning, Rufai. How are you this morning? No, 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 I'm Ukwani, as yeah. usual. We had a, someone from Delta State earlier. Yes, no. He did very well. You know, we are. We Delta. Delta people, yes, we are. Yes. <laughs> we Delta people. You know I'm Delta by birth. I know birth. now, I know. I'm Delta than you are. You are. Yes, I but am. But you know I'm Delta by birth. I'm Delta by marriage. I was born in Worry. <laughs> Correct. Actually, what is that special delicacy for your village? It's called um, Nkwabi. Where are you going? <laughs> I'm you not going there. You want me to mention it? No. <laughs> ah, don't allow this. You, you guys seem to Don't allow this. A special dose of Dr. Abati, don't allow this. Why do you have to allow everything about Ukwane? Don't you allow can. it. You can. I take pride in my country. So you take pride in louding, everything, that, louding after, everything after about the court. There are many places that it is legal. Oh, yeah. right. well, Ruby, right. to, to scream sure. out loud? <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Okay. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United Kingdom, the Parliamentary Committee on Thursday found that former Prime Minister Boris Johnson deliberately misled lawmakers over breaches of his own COVID-19 lockdown rules in a devastating and unprecedented report that lambasts Johnson's conduct after the Partygate scandal, which revealed that illegal gatherings took place at Downing Street. The committee's report amounts to a historic admonishment of a former prime minister who lied to parliament that rules were followed at all times. In Sudan, Governor Kamis Abaka from the country's Darfur region was assassinated on Wednesday, just hours after accusing the paramilitary rapid support forces of committing genocide. The conflict that erupted two months ago between the RSF and the army has inflamed ethnic tensions in Darfur. Abaka was the most senior official known to have been killed since the conflict began in April. Video footage circulating on social media appears to show a group of armed men wearing RSF uniforms detaining the governor, but the RSF blamed outlaws for his death. In Nigeria, scores of fighters of the Islamic State, West Africa province, were reportedly killed in military airstrikes on Wednesday. A factory used in making vehicle-borne improvised explosive devices in the Tumbun area near Lake Chad was also destroyed in the air raid. The strikes were said to have been coordinated by the Northeast Joint Task Force component of Operation Hadin Kai of the Nigerian Air Force. Finally, under entertainment, the Guinness World Records announced on Thursday that its post certifying Hilda Bassi as the world's record holder for the longest cooking marathon has become its best performing tweet of all time. The organization said the tweet reached nearly 25 million news feeds worldwide. On June 13th, Hilda Bassi became the record holder for the longest cooking marathon by an individual weeks after the chef completed her four-day cooking stint. The 26-year-old chef achieved the feat with 93 hours and 11 minutes. Congratulations to Hilda Bassi. I mean, you know, it was such a great moment on the 13th of June when she was announced. But you know, it was 100 hours. A lot of people were praising her for, but uh, the Guinness World seven Record took out seven hours. hours from it. But another controversy that came out of this was the fact that there was a chef from Ekiti State. Who's from Ekiti here? From Ekiti State, Chef Dami, who yes, was cooking does. as well. And I believe that she made 120 hours. Unfortunately, like you said, Ayo, she did not 
not um, submit she, her. Guinness World Records says she didn't submit her application. Yeah, an application. Yeah. So, and she, I think she's come out to say that she just wanted to do it to show that it was possible. Yes. And you know, it was, it was an inspirational attempt. Yes. And there are a few things around her even stay in the course. And you, you know, you just have meant to have one minute break in an hour. I mean, five minutes break in an hour. But she was just on her own terms. There were some videos. <laughs> she was dancing buga. Yeah, she, and she was resting yeah. and all of that. But she did well. Congratulations, yeah, congratulations. To her. And she should try again. I believe she got some backlash because some people were saying, ah, I wait for Hilda to get her record first before you attempt mm -hmm. to try out. But you know, on Sunday, Hilda also praised her yes, okay. for her attempt. That was beautiful. Yeah. This is the Nigerian spirit. Congratulations yeah. congrats, congrats to, to both women and, I think and Hilda back. Yes. competition yes. has become uh, now a national pastime. <laughs> in Ibadan, there is a gentleman called Temito Adebayo. Yes. He says he will cook for 140 hours. 140. Okay. It's a person. There is uh, a treasure, Abraham, who says she too will break record. Yes. That she will cook more than uh, Hidabasi. Absolutely. The what whole of uh, Nigeria <laughs> is becoming uh, uh, a kitchen. Yes. Everybody is beginning to cook. So I looked at, I reviewed all the things. I said, okay, what are we doing here? <laughs> Maybe we, uh, if you know how to cook, I will come and share you. Unfortunately, there's so, no so money involved. If there was money, I would have done it. Yeah, you know? well, so I was, I not, not I was wondering whether in money record, was involved. No. But in Federal <laughs> University of uh, Technology, Oyekiti, yeah. the same place where you had uh, Damilola de yes. Parusi, that's the uh, Chef name Dami. of uh, Chef Dami. Mm -hmm. There is one man now who says he's a lecturer at university. He's going to teach for 100 hours, nonstop. So everybody it. now is trying to do. And that's why you, your question is relevant. Is yeah. there money involved? Yes, there is in this money. Thing, no, 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 no. Not, not directly. The record. Is it's there money involved? Eventually, the endorsement. Yes, okay, but not, yeah. they're not going to pay them, but endorsement. Yes. And what can you cook, uh, Ujinika? <laughs> Go and cook for <laughs> 200, 200 hours. Don't try me out. Go and do 200 hours. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but for me, the twist I see to this is, yes, we're all celebrating all of this, which is good, but it should also ring a bell as regards our culture of record keeping in Nigeria. Yeah. Let's give them go a little bit further. How did Guinness Book of World Records start? It started because the former managing director of Guinness then, they had a contest and they had no, you know, benchmark to authenticate the arguments they had. Yeah. And that's why it's called the Guinness Book of World Records because the man that actually said it was actually the initially managing director of Guinness. And they built it into a global institution. Yeah. But us, sure. our record keeping capacity is as good as non-existent. But Hilda is look, showing that it, it look can at, work. Look, yeah, at it the is state, yeah. look at the state of our national archives. Mm -hmm. We don't keep records. How can we, I think what we should be thinking about apart from this, how can we make an institution out of record keeping that will be so authenticated worldwide that we have more glamour than the Guinness Book of World Records? That's it. what I'm thinking. I love it. We, can't, can't, we, we can't possibly come up with anything that is better than the Guinness uh, world record. Who says? <laughs> Who but, says? Dr. But Bazzi? imitation. Who says? Imitation. Who says we can come up okay. with something better? Imitation, as Aristotle tells us, is the best form of flattery. Yes, absolutely. So we see people trying to emulate your Dabasi, and your Dabasi has been certified. Yeah. Yes. You know, they tweet that uh, Guinness World Record Center. They say is the best that she they have had. The so Nigeria she's no, she's Nigeria. become she's us. become a source of inspiration yes. for other people. That even lecturers want to do a carton, a carton <laughs> they call it. Which is amazing. So I mean, they should do more. My plea to you, uh, Ujineka, look for something. <laughs> do something, you know, so that we can come and cheer you on. So, so guys, Maybe guys, dancing. guys, Maybe guys no, Oji, but if, we're, if, we're, if we're really ready, yes. there's a record currently on mm -hmm. for the longest running television show, mm -hmm. our longest running radio show. I remember when Chris Morris broke that record a couple of years ago, I don't know if that re re record is still on. We could put in for it, if we're keen on it, the longest television show on TV. That's a record Fingers we could break. Cross. Before, before we cross, say cool. yes, let's see how long the current one is. So yeah. you know how many no, hours, yeah, how many hours when, you're going to be prepared Chris Morris for, right? It, it was for a couple of days there. All right. So well, all right. we could put in for that. Okay. Dr. Abati. Can we move on to the no, next No, I'm not Dr. Abati. Abati. <laughs> no, I'm not No. No, I'm no, not looking for anything. Be on TV. I don't. For no. five days, no, stop. No, I don't want that. <laughs> well, all right. I think it's, it should continue. It's enough pressure already. It's everywhere. It happens everywhere. Let other people go and try their luck. Continue with the conversation. Why not? All right, well, let's continue on what's trending.
former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, and the 14th Emir of Kano State, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, paid a courtesy visit to President Bola Ahmed Tunubu on Thursday and praised him for his economic reforms since his assumption of office. Sanusi's visit comes barely one week after the president suspended Godwin Emefele as a CBN governor. While addressing the press, the former Emir said the decisions taken by the president so far were long overdue. The president and I are old friends. He's my brother. Uh, we've been a friend since his first term as governor of Lagos State when I was a banker. And I have not seen him since the elections. I wanted to give him time to settle down. Um, so the first reason was to come and congratulate him formally. But also I wear many caps. Uh, I wear the cap of an economist. So I came to thank him for the steps he has taken to put this economy on course. As you know, many of the issues that we have been talking about, uh, the subsidy that has caused a hemorrhage on the fiscus, the multiple exchange rate regimes, and so on, uh, these are issues that I have personally been talking about for a long time. And I'm happy that on his very first day, he has addressed these issues and the markets are happy. And it is important uh, when the government does the right thing for us to give them feedback. It's not always uh, when they do a wrong thing that you complain. So he has started on such a strong footing as far as the economy is concerned that we have to come and support and encourage uh, that we continue along that path and be advocates for the policies he has pursued. Well, former military head of state, Abdul Salami Abubakar, also visited President Bola Ahmed Tinubu at the presidential villa in Abuja, making him the second former leader of the country after good luck Jonathan to visit Tinubu since he became president. Well, some Nigerians have shared their thoughts on Twitter regarding the visits. Let's take some tweets. This is from Zach Pata, who wrote, I like the good gesture. The president went to receive Abdul Salami as soon as he elated and both walked into the villa. Tinubu will buy everyone to his side before the first 100 days and get Nigeria going by 2024 by God's grace. Well, Nii wrote, this power negotiator is perhaps in the villa to appeal for soft landing for these sore capitalists and corruption misters. Abdul Salami Abubakar has since 1999 been a broker for past presidents. Of what value is that to the masses? Tinubu should remain focused and undeterred. Also, uh, Dr. Abati, you know that the Emir's visit caused a lot of opera on, so on social media as well, because, you know, obviously he was the past CBN governor and uh, the current CBN governor was uh, suspended and he's uh, un currently under uh, detention. A lot of people are saying, you know, I mean, he did try to reform a lot of policies at the time, and you can see that his support is there, but they're asking, what is he doing there at this time? Okay, I'll read the comments brief. There's a gentleman, Nii Shuye boy, that you quoted, yes. said, who said uh, General Abu Salami Abubakar has always been pleading for past presidents. No, that's not the importance of General Abu Salami Abubakar. His importance is that he was the uh, head of state the last military head of state who midwived the transition to civilian rule and handed over to his civilian government in 1999. His significance also lies in the fact that he's the uh, chair, leader, founder of the National Peace Committee. And every election cycle since that 1999, he has been in the forefront of ensuring that political gladiators in Nigeria sign peace accords mm. and commit to peace. So he's not a negotiator for past presidents. Uh, but these younger people, course, they don't the know the history of their own country. General Abdul Salami Abubakar was 81 this very week. And it's good to see him still looking good at 81. He has visited the president-elect. Uh, President Jonathan has also visited. President Jonathan is head of mission, mediation mission uh, for the crisis in Mali. And we were told that he went there to brief the, the president, as is the tradition. And, you know, the question now is, who will be next? Are we likely to see, uh, you know, General Gawan also visiting him? Are we likely to see also President Olusha Gwambasanjo uh, visiting him? But all of these visits will fall under the category of well, great symbolism, you know, good uh, signaling. Yeah. Because all of that will help 
President Tinubu to look like he has been endorsed and that he's settling down. Traditional rulers from the southwest have visited him, led by the Oni Risha, the Oni of Ife, uh, Emia Obagu, or Bogu, uh, or to whom is Jagaban of Bogu, has been there. The Emir of Kotangura has been there. And then you also have former CBN governor uh, uh, Lamido Sanusi uh, visiting uh, the uh, uh, Sakin Kano, you know, uh, uh, Emir of Kano, his uh, Royal Majesty uh, Lamido Sanusi Lamido, also visiting in dual capacity, not just as a leader. Uh, but also as somebody who understands the main issues ongoing in Nigeria. He was there, you know, dealing with monetary policies. He understands the issues about forced subsidies. Yes. And Nigerians will recall that he, as CBN governor, under President Jonathan, had to deal with some of these issues. And some of the recommendations he made at the time are some of the things uh, that the current president is uh, following. So nobody should be surprised uh, about all of that. So more people will visit of course. But the, the, the greater concern will be, who are those ones that are not visited? Will President uh, Obasanjo visit? Will uh, Mr. Peter Obi visit? Obasanjo Would uh, Obasanjo Atiku Abubaka uh, visit? Those are the questions flying in the air. So who is violent here? <laughs> well, all right. Well, because we don't have time, we'll take another story. The House of Representatives has rejected a motion to declare a state of emergency on factors causing young Nigerians to relocate abroad. The motion titled Need to Declare Immigration of Young Nigerians Abroad, also known as Jakba Syndrome, a national emergency, was sponsored by Philip Agbese, a lawmaker from Benue State who said the growing statistics of young Nigerians relocating abroad portends a grave danger for the nation in many ways, ranging from economic to intellectual and social aspects. I strongly believe that in the days ahead, Parliament will have to revisit. If we don't talk about it, one day we'll wake up, we'll discover that the best doctors are no longer in this country. We'll discover that the best nurses are no longer here. We'll discover that we no longer have people to build roads and bridges for us in this country. Because these are the very people that are living. Our IT experts are living people who are very good in the banking sector are living. So there is something fundamentally wrong. And I believe that is what parliament should be interested. Well, we do know that there is an emergency on Jackba syndrome, but why wouldn't Nigerians want to Jackba? The lawmakers are saying, some lawmakers are saying, I mean, you guys should provide an enabling environment for these young Nigerians mm -hmm. to remain here. But you know, this is all coming as Aminat Yusuf, a law student of the Lagos State University in Ojo, achieved the best graduating student status with a cumulative grade point average of 5.0 in the university's 40-year history. Ahead of its 26th convocation ceremony, the university announced a reward of 500,000 Naira cash to be awarded to the student. I mean, 500,000 Naira, a lot of people are saying that. Are is, it, is, it, is it? A what, was the <laughs> what was the problem for the winner of Big Brother? <laughs> I know that's where you were going. You see, the truth is, that's the, issue. the, truth is that's, that's, that's the kind of importance we place on education mm. in our society. Somebody that got 5.0, that can be very useful to this country. But if it's entertainment, we all jump. And I'm not saying entertainment is not good, but also we want corporate sector out there to look at people like this. But I think that bill has to be revisited. I get the argument, but I think uh, Philip Agbese didn't phrase it properly. properly and yeah. let, me, let me put like a context said, about yeah. it. He didn't phrase it properly. So it's not just Jakba. I think what he should have said is the loss of intellectual capacity in our corporate sector that leads to the dunit prospect of our country, which is not just about the youth, Jack Mine. We forget that this is the second wave. The first wave was what we call Andrews then, based on Veno Mario Garrison, that she released from Tabansi Records in the 80s. Andrew, low leaf town, no Nigeria will survive. That first wave came when the economy started to plummet a lot after the recession of the 83s that led to the ouster of Shagari and Co. and all of that. Do you know that the intellectual stock we lost in our universities and our corporate sector, we've not been able to replace them? Now, because the economy is not doing well, this is another blight on us. And we felt the impact. When we had the Naira incident, internet banking transactions were not going because yeah. most of those people so at Jackpot the and the other, most IT department of bank had gone away. That's it. So we are having that downtime. And this is a bill to be able to say, okay, let us talk about the problems initially, 
create an enabling environment to be able to keep this our intellectual health. Because you see, most of the people that are Japan, they are not just university leavers. They are people that have worked five, ten years, Absolutely. gained industry. That most of these Nigerian companies, OG, have spent their money to train, but they are taking the experiences out there to Canada to develop other economies. Mm -hmm. So that's why it needs to be revisited. Then it needs to be rephrased properly. Then we know that it's a national emergency. We are losing skills by the day, OG. Getting a developer in the tech sector to even service the banking sector is problematic now as we speak. Well, all right. Well, congratulations to Aminat as well. Five point OGPA is completely amazing. Good that's one, a, that's a record. Excellent. Well, we'll take our final story. The Lagos State Governor, Babajide Songwolu, on Wednesday attended the 60th birthday celebration of his predecessor, Akin Miambode. Ambode was the governor of Lagos State from 2015 to 2019 and was the first governor of the state to serve just one term in office since the return of democracy in 1999. Somulu took to social media to celebrate Ambode while hailing his positive and significant impact in some sectors during his tenure, to the surprise of many, because in 2018, Ambode spoke against the governorship ambition of Sonwolu ahead of the primary election of the All Progressives Congress in Lagos. While at the private ceremony to host the former Lagos State Governor, Sonwolu gave a reassuring toast. And so we want to toast to a fine gentleman, to a Nigerian and to a Lagosian that means so many things to all of us here to my brother, my friend, my predecessor, Mr. Kim Nambode on the 60th of the EPP. Hooray! EPP. Hooray! EPP. Hooray! Congratulations to Ambody. Um, I mean, this was amazing. That was Steve Ayorin, the, uh, actually one of our, uh, uh, my co-anchor on the Sunday Steve morning show. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I, I thought this was amazing yes. for Governor Samwolu to have done. It showed great leadership, great sends courage. Right I mean, yes. sends the right signal really yes, quickly. Absolutely. First yeah. of all, happy birthday to the former governor of Lagos State. And I hope that this new picture mm -hmm. would take away the memories of that famous or infamous press conference yes. held by um, governor, former governor Ambode during the campaigns. I hope it's also a sign that the APC is putting their, uh, you know, um, getting their house together absolutely. and also emulating the president because that's what he's doing currently in, time, in terms of extending the hand of um, friendship, olive branches, bringing people together. But ultimately, what we hope that this sign would do is for the benefit of the people. At the end of the day, it's not just about the show wins. It's hoping that it would help us. You well, know. very well said, I'll, I'll try to do this in 30 seconds. Congratulations to former Governor Ambody, ex-Federal Government College, uh, Worry, Worry. Yeah. Uh, Pro former Pro University, University of Lagos graduate uh, in accounting, who be Tom Free uh, fellow in accounting, uh, former council treasurer in Mushin, former auditor general, former accountant general, mm -hmm. governor of Lagos State, uh, uh, 2015 right. to 2019. And it's good to see Sonwulu, current governor, Absolutely. mending fences with him and proposing the toast on the occasion of his sister by the way. I hope Nigeria yeah. will find I think it's a great more gesture. use yes. for his talents. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. Thank you all for your great analysis as always on What's Trending Today. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending Today. I'll see you all next week. <laughs>